a region of the oceans on our planet Earth. Today, majority of our planet is covered with the ocean. But where did it all come from? Did we always have majority of our surface of the planet covered with the water? Or it just appeared recently? How the first ocean appeared on our planet? Where the water come from? Was it different from the ocean we have today? And what did it mean for the life forms on our planet? Let's talk about the evolving hydrosphere on our planet, theories where it came from, and how it's changed. Today we cannot imagine the surface of our planet without the oceans. It's one of the planets in our solar system which have so much water and the cycle of the water. Clouds constantly developing, the rain on the surface and form drops or the snow, and then large rivers bringing all this water down back to the oceans. This large circle of recycling the water, constantly moving it, affecting the chemical composition of the water bodies, bringing the vital water to the plants on the surface, to animals, to people, and then reaching our oceans with important nutrition and the fresh water. Today, around 71% of the planet's surface is covered with salty seawater. The average depth of the ocean about 3.5 kilometers. And the total volume of the ocean waters is immense, very large. However, the ocean water is salty. Some people estimate if we evaporate all the oceans on our planet right now and then spread the, all the salt which will be left around our surface of the planet, it will cover the thickness about 150 meters. That's how much salt are right now in our oceans. Meanwhile, we have some fresh water preserved on our planet, only about 3% of the global water on our planet. Thus, only in the glaciers we have 2% of the water and 1.2% trapped in the underground water. Freshwater reservoirs, most of the people using those for our main water supply. It seems like it's not much and there's a lot of alarm about preserving the fresh water especially in the global climate warming when the glaciers are melting. However, if you think about the actual volume of this percentage, it's quite a lot of water. Still, we should be very mindful with using fresh water. The life on our planet not always been here. It's only appeared when the oceans are established and the cycle of the hydrosphere was established as well. And the land was colonized by the first organisms only due to the cycle of the water evaporation from the surface of the water bodies, oceans, seas and lakes, purifying in atmosphere and then bringing down on the surface of the land as a rain and snow. All these processes are very dynamic and complex and they're affected by our celestial properties, the rotation of the Earth, its axis, distance to the sun, radiation cycles coming from the source, from the sun, heat redistribution around the planet by the hydrosphere and atmosphere, and also the patterns of the ocean circulation. Please check out my videos about the ocean currents for more information. So let's talk about when the very first oceans appeared, the very first hydrosphere appeared on our planet. In the very beginning, when the Earth was just forming, it was a very hot piece of rock with a lot of molten mala on the surface. At that time, the surface temperature was very high for the water to sustain. Therefore, in the first years, thousands years of formation of our planet, there were no water on the surface in a liquid form, like we can imagine right now. It was in form of steam, which was evaporated very fast. But where this water come from? It's come from the interior processes of melting and erupting rocks. You might be surprised if you're not a geologist, but the water components are found in most of the rocks on our surface of the planet. We have even particular group of minerals which contained a lot of water in them. For example, beautiful and expensive rocks of opal, which you can find a lot in Australia. They have big component of them in forms of water. So if you heat it up very high, passing the melting point of that rock, the water will release in form of the steam. And that's exactly what was happening during the numerous volcanic eruptions in these first days and years of our planet. Scientists been speculating for a long time when the first ocean appeared on our planet. And it's very important because the first life forms start the existence from the water. Therefore, we need to understand when we already can say, ah, there was uh, oceans on our planet, 
so we can estimate and calculate when the first life form appeared. Geologists play a crucial part with understanding of that. We are looking and searching for the oldest sedimentary rocks and other rocks, remnants of the organisms at the bottom of the first oceans, which we can find on our surface, date, and estimate not just when these rocks were appearing, but also what condition were the time on the planet, temperature-wise and chemically-wise. Please watch my videos about the oldest rock on our planet, where we talk about that. So far, the most dominating theory was suggesting that majority of the Earth's water was introduced during the late heavy bombardment, when in the stages of our solar system development, there was a lot of asteroids and meteorites falling down on all of the planets. We recorded the period, and there's a numerous evidence on other planets, such as Mercury, Moon, Mars, and so on. We can see the evidence of this heavy bombarding of asteroids about 3.9 billion years ago. And there was a lot of icy asteroids and comets rained on the surface of our planet and bring a lot of material. However, recently scientists also showing that an individual water molecules trapped with a crystalline structure of common minerals. That's exactly what I explained you before. For example, such as olivine, orthopyroxenes, they contributed as well dramatically to the water on our surface. We call this process of outgazing. When numerous volcanoes steam the planet with a lot of minerals and water, which then, when the Earth started cooling down, preserved on our surface and formed the water. Some scientists suggested all this outgazing could cause only several meters of the ocean around our planet. However, recent analysis of the meteorites, which are similar of composition that we found they were falling on our Earth back in the day, therefore the rocky minerals must be contributed significantly to the volume of the first oceans. Sophisticated computer modeling these days showed that volcanism would quickly create a steamy atmosphere by rapidly cooling Earth at that time, it would form the first ocean as back in the day as 4.4 billion years ago. So how different those first oceans were from the oceans we have right now? Well, first of all, there was a totally different condition on our planet's surface. The sun was much weaker. Scientists suggesting 25% weaker than the sun activity right now on our planet. So you will suggest that the temperature on the surface of our planet was smaller. However, as they say, the Earth was hotter from the interior cooling processes in the beginning of its life. And also there was a much more bigger composition of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, which would cause the heat to preserve on the planet. Therefore, we suggest that the water that was released from steaming would run freely in form of the liquid water and maybe some ice towards the poles. You can imagine carbon dioxide and steam was not only compound which was released during the outgazing or this intense volcanic eruption on our surface. Other compounds such as sulfur dioxide, hydrogen sulfates, hydrogen chlorides, nitrogen, nitrous oxides and steam were released as well at that time. Some of these components were dissolved in the water and they caused such a lack of solutions which were falling down on our surface in dissolving preserved the time basaltic material on the surface. For example, carbonic and sulfuric acid was very good ingredients that were destroying and dissolving the minerals which were preserved on the surface, neutralizing them. This first mantle that we found on the surface of our Earth was easily eroded and materials started moving around. Therefore, we can suggest that the first ocean composition was quite complex and very fast become enriched chemically. You can find such elements like iron, aluminium, magnesium and silicon in that water already by that time. And that time when the scientists start reporting the first sedimentary rocks deposited on the surface of the pre-life Earth. I already talked about this in my previous video, the oldest rock on our planet. Please check it out, watch this video, subscribe and like it. When the geologists find 3.75 billion years old iron-rich sediments in the northern Quebec, in the area of Canada. We called those iron deposits banded iron formations and they were formed in the shallow waters of the first oceans. The iron originated from the first volcanic eruptions on our uh, planet and then transported in form of solution to the shallow waters. Scientists find other evidence of all the age of the first oceans on our planet. We're finding such evidence like in Greenland, 3.8 billion years old pillar lavas formed when molten rock erupting underwater 
cooled rapidly into the globules and cylindrical shapes. The features which only could form under the water, so we need a significant amount of water at that time to form it, which suggesting oceans were already there at that time. So how different that first oceans were from modern oceans? Of course they were much more different, everything was much more different back in the day on our planet. Its chemical composition, temperature, activity of the sun, and the land, ocean proportions and composition at that time on our planet. First study suggested that as far as back in 3.5 billion years ago, the seawater temperature was much higher than we have right now. It was from 55 to 85 Celsius degrees. That's the evidence we found from some proportion of oxygen isotopes in rock sediments. However, recent analysis of hydrogen oxygen in 3.4 billion years old chest sedimentary rock from South Africa suggested that ocean waters could not have been warmer than 40 degrees Celsius. And that sounds like more logical and reasonable temperature for that time. Also, it suggested that previous oceans, the first oceans on our planet, were much richer with the hydrogen than the modern oceans. From here, we concluded that the atmosphere has much more hydrogen composition as well. All this evidence from the rocks we find on our planet, and some analysis of the meteorites and comets that falling down on our planet, we can estimate that at least 3.8 billion years ago, there was already some form of ocean on our planet and possibly it was formed as back as 4.4 billion years ago. For the age of our planet, about 4.6 billion years, this is not that far from its start. And however, the temperature of those oceans was not as hot as we were thinking before, however, the chemical composition was different for what we have right now. And some evidence from banded iron formations only 1.8 billion years ago suggesting that the composition of the oceans become more closer to the modern one which we get used to these days. By putting the developing of the ocean and its changes on the time frame of developing of the life, we can see that there is a very intricate connection between formation of the oceans, its chemical composition, geological processes on our planet, chemistry, sun activity, and the life forms themselves. So everything affects everything to develop and changing it while it's developing. Therefore, our uh, story of the planet is much more complex than my seems from the beginning. The oceans are the life, the blood of our planet. Oceans give us the life. We have majority of our bodies made of the water. And without the water, nothing could strive and live on our planet. Therefore, let's contribute by preserving our ocean, preserving the life in the ocean, and continue our research in direction to understand its complex system, how it's affect on the global climate, and our life. Thank you for your subscription, and I'll see you next videos when we talk more about history of our planet.